Hello there, and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. How are you all doing? Today we're going to be having a look at the European Vice President being absolutely, well, eviscerated, basically, by Ian Dow from LBC Radio. The main points that I wanted to bring up on this is very, very clear, and I want to make it very, very clear, that the EU Vice President had already made a decision on Boris Johnson's idea of a deal, idea of what the backstop means, idea of what to come to some sort of arrangement or compromise was already decided what her opinion was of that because of what Juncker already said and because that she already has a predisposition and has been advised to say this. Or to accept this. And I want everybody to remember that when listening to this aspect of the video. That she has not read the letter or the deal that Boris Johnson sent to the European Union to be considered for having a deal. Now just let that sink in. The European Union had had a deal proposed by Boris Johnson to go to the European Union to be able to try and compromise in whatever way or if you, even if you don't think it was going to compromise but a deal had been sent and anybody lower than the Vice President from her own admission had not even read the letter or the deal but because Juncker has said no everybody else has said no that seems very very weird doesn't it almost like they're not actually taking any deal or any valuation that comes from the UK based on merit but yet are being dictated to by Juncker on what to say and what to think even though they haven't looked at what the evidence is or have a look at what the deal was she just knows it's a bad deal why because Juncker said so with that being said let's get into this four minute video from Indow and LBC on this and let's actually see what she has to say about this herself, shall we? We have to be seriously prepared for a disorderly exit of the UK from the EU, which could happen at the end of the month or a bit later. But uh, I think I regret, but this is uh, a little bit the feeling that I get from what has happened today. Have you read the letter to Jean-Claude Juncker? No, I haven't read the letter, but I'm, I'm more or less aware of the of uh, his proposal on, on how to organize the border. So let's just listen to that again. She was asked by Ian Dow if she had read the letter by Boris Johnson explaining what he would like to go and do or would like to happen about the Irish backstop and the Irish border. She says, no, I haven't read the letter, but I am up to date with what is being proposed. Question for the uninitiative or people that just try and want to believe. How can she be up to date with what Boris Johnson has actually said via Boris Johnson's mouth and opinion and merit if she hasn't read the letter that he is proposing that he does? So again, she hasn't read the letter that he proposes what he wants, right or wrong, and she says that she's up to date on what he wants, even though she gladly and freely admits she has not read the letter. Interesting how that predisposition or decision has already manifested itself into what she thinks is going to happen. And, uh, I mean, I can only uh, refer to what the, what the reactions from Russell's have been. That she gladly and freely admitted that she, the European Parliament Vice President, hasn't read the terms or the idea that has been proposed by Boris Johnson in the letter, regardless of if you like it or not, that she hasn't read that, but she is solely going to base her ideas in an interview and policy making or understanding policy making via second hand information and by biased opinions of how reactions are happening in Brussels. 
Now, to me, that very much suggests that that is a consensus-based opinion, rather than her making her own opinion on what has been put in front of her. Amazing that she has actually come out and said that on national radio, saying that she hadn't read the letter, but it's solely going on a reaction to Brussels. Don't you find that absolutely amazing that the European Parliament Vice President is basing her opinion on other people's second-hand reactions? Isn't that amazing? Well, so can, can I, can I, I mean, with, with, with respect, can I suggest that you actually read the letter that he's written to Jean-Claude Juncker? Because it does prepare, contain detailed proposals as to how the border would work. It, it protects the integrity of the single market and it, it comes up with proposals for new customs arrangements. Now, if the European Union is seriously going to say that that is not a basis for negotiation, then we might as well all give up and go home. In down there, hitting the now on the actual head there if there's detailed proposals that actually come up with alternatives and the european union are not even going to listen to those alternatives or not even going to read the alternatives and just dismiss it then what is the actual point in trying to doctor a deal it's uh, if, if it's based on this idea that there would be customs checked at, at, um, at manufacturing sites uh, sort of in the vicinity but not at the border so I think it's a very unusual proposal it's, it's not now I want you to listen very 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 carefully remember this is not just some general MEP this is not just some general run-of-the-mill bureaucrat that works for the EU this is supposed to be the European Parliament's vice president that is going to be saying this and trying to say this that it doesn't seem that it's a reasonable negotiation tactic even though that it has been proposed and has been operating for literally years the port of Rotterdam operates in exactly that fashion and the vice president of the European Parliament doesn't know that or doesn't want to know that just let that sink in they are so lazy and so nonchalant in their understanding of the bureaucracy that is in place or the bureaucracy that's in place that they don't even know what they already have in place that can be literally transferred across to be put into place somewhere else. But that then again asks different questions. Is that just from negligence or is that actually done purposefully now i know what i think i think is a mixture of both but what do you guys think not, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's not unusual at all because that happens at ports all over Europe. In Rotterdam, a lot of the customs checks are conducted five miles away from the port of Rotterdam. Uh, well, um, I still believe that uh, this doesn't correspond any to the all the requirements to to, to uh, keep uh, the the border between uh, the Republic of Ireland and, and Northern Ireland. So defeated on her point that this doesn't happen in the European Union, that they can't check or have checks away from different borders in different ports or different manufacturers, that she completely negates that straight away as soon as Ian Dow brings up the amazing and pertinent point that this already happens by acceptance of the EU in the EU, but for some reason wouldn't be able to be transferred to Ireland and Northern Ireland or to the island of Ireland in general for no reason whatsoever other than they don't want it to happen. And then to go on to say that, well, I see what you're saying, Ian Dow, that we already do this, but, you know, I believe that it doesn't go with the European Parliament's will or understanding of what we should be doing at the minute. Yeah. We know that it doesn't go with what you want because you want the UK to stay in the European Union, don't you? So anything that you can do to frustrate negotiations and to make sure that we get a second referendum is what you're going to be operating by. 
uh, open. Uh, so, well, I'm afraid you're, uh, I'm afraid my, you're my calling for Mr. Verhofstadt's propaganda because it absolutely does that. No, I haven't even heard. I haven't even heard from his uh, reactions yet. No, I haven't read the letter, but I'm, I'm more or less aware of the of uh, his proposal on on how to organise the border. And uh, I mean, I can only uh, refer to to what uh, what the reactions from Russell's have been. What the, what the reactions from Russell's have been, but um, but the only thing I can say that uh, I, I'm not even sure that uh, um, Boris Johnson wants a deal. I think I think he's being so open, openly saying that whatever happens, uh, the exit day stays. So I think we'd better start to prepare for that uh, that no deal. Well, it doesn't Brexit. it doesn't sound to That's me that you particularly view. want a deal either. So. The woman that has said quite blatantly that she hasn't read the letter, doesn't know what is actually in the proposal, doesn't actually understand what the compromises are actually in the proposal as the European Union already does the compromises in which Boris Johnson has asked for to be put into place in Northern Ireland and Ireland, but yet won't for some strange reason because whatever is now trying to come out and say that, well, you know, I'm going to deflect from the fact that you've actually asked me policy questions that I know nothing about, to say, well, I think that Boris Johnson doesn't even want a deal anyway. Even though, literally, Ian Dow has proven that these compromises are in line with what the European Union already does with outside countries in ports in the EU already but yet somehow Boris Johnson is the one that's being dishonest that doesn't want the deal or doesn't want to deal and at the end Indel hits the nail on the goddamn head again it doesn't sound that you want a deal and I think that is absolutely correct. I do think that the EU do not want the UK to have a deal now. And I honestly do think that the EU want the UK to suffer as much as possible for leaving the EU. Regardless of how it will affect literally millions of people and civilians that have nothing to do with this. Well, what I would like to see is that he respects the, the House of Commons and the Parliament which he hasn't done particularly lately. And um, I obviously hope that there will be a second chance for the UK uh, people to, to have their say on the situation mm. now. So, now we have a, another deflection tactic. Oh, Boris Johnson did this, so you know, he's, he's the dishonest one. Um, yeah, you've literally just said you haven't read the letter, you have no understanding of your own European policies and how what he proposed, Boris Johnson proposed, actually is already in line and in keeping with policy that is already written in ports across the whole of the EU and just wants to transmute that across or transfer that across to the, the island of Ireland. But yet somehow he's being dishonest on that. And then we get to the crooks of what the European Union actually wants to happen. The good old keep on voting and eventually I'll get what I want. And that's exactly what she has literally just espoused here. I'm hoping that the UK has a second referendum. I'm hoping that that is going to be what sorts the country out. Interesting isn't it? That countries that are outside of the UK all want the UK to have a second referendum almost like to say your first decision didn't count uh, in the why, why, why can't you why can't you respect colleagues. why can't you respect democracy and respect the fact that the majority of british people voted to leave the european um, union and three and a half years later because of the intransigence well, of people like you in the european union it hasn't come to pass you're very challenging and I, I well I am that. challenging partly be, you, partly because you haven't partly, actually read the letter from Boris Johnson I think if you read the letter you might have a different uh, understanding I, I saw, of it I saw his speech I saw his speech but anyway so uh, I'm afraid that uh, we have a different idea of democracy uh, I'm afraid that uh, we have a different idea of democracy that oh, clearly. Uh, to go back to three and a half years 
to to this re- so-called referendum. I mean, it was a so-called very referendum. Oh, seriously, you call yes. it a so-called yes. referendum? But you'd yes. like to have another because one, would you? Yeah, no, no, yes, and <laughs> because I'm the I'm I'm a proponent of the Swiss model of direct democracy, which means that alternatives are very well grounded on what are the consequences of each of the options, and we cannot even with the best will say that uh, the the voting in in 2016. And matches those requirements. No, so I think I think I think we can. I think again, with with respect, I lived through that referendum. You did not. I know exactly how that debate was conducted. Most people got more information about the pros and cons of that than any other election or referendum in UK history. Um, I really would suggest that you go and read Boris Johnson's letter. Heidi, thank you. So I just quickly wanted to say a couple of final words, and those final words are. She did not read the letter, but had made a biased opinion on what Boris Johnson was proposing. Boris Johnson was proposing actual decent compromises that the EU already compromises with on other countries so that they can trade with them on other instances. As Ian Dell pointed out, with the port of Rotterdam for instance being the most obvious one. You then have the point of the fact that she didn't even know that being the vice president of the European Parliament and she didn't even know that and if she did she feigned ignorance onto that point so either she is negligible as in she didn't know what the hell she's doing or she is purposely being obtuse meaning that she herself is purposely saying well you know I didn't know that this happened when in full world she did know and is purposely not giving that as an option because she wants to do something in general. Then we move on to the fact of saying that Boris Johnson is now not honest and blah blah blah. In other words deflecting away from the fact of the European unions and their negligence. Then we move on to the fact of now the so-called referendum as in a way of you need to get rid of that we don't want that referendum it is not right it's not honest it's not correct so on and so forth i want a direct form of democracy i am a proponent of the swiss model blah 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 and as in dow correctly stated we have more information and some people would say more misinformation but we had so much information overall about the pros and the cons of staying or leaving the EU than any other information that we have ever had on any other general election or election of any type in the UK and they want to get rid of that. Then we move on to the point of itself of saying that well as we don't like that referendum you should have a second referendum and you should vote this way. If you vote this way we'll respect that referendum but the referendum in which you've already democratically decided that you're going to have we're going to negate that one because you know you didn't really know what you're doing you obviously didn't want to vote this way so we'll give you a second chance and that in itself is the main reason why I me always and will forever vote to leave the European Union this is not a democratic democratic way of dealing with people this is not an honest way of dealing with partners that you want to trade with this is not an honest way of trying to deal with democracy whether or not you believe that your way of democracy is better than another person's way or another country's way of democracy you have to respect that country's level of democracy we wouldn't go to france and say right france you can no longer be a republic anymore we need you to be a representative democracy we can't do that and we should never do that but yet the european union is trying to via the vice president in this occasion to direct us on how we should be democratic to their standard. Interesting that they won't respect the democracy that we've already established and we already have. But then again, I suppose why would they? It breaks their own narrative and stops them from being the bad guys. Because as long as they can control the narrative by any which means that they can, They can say that Boris Johnson is the bad guy, that the UK is not looking for a deal, that the UK is the one that's pushing for no deal. 
I did a live stream a couple of days ago, I will link it in the description box below and I will put it up here as well, that you can listen to. Well, we go through Boris Johnson's letter to Jonker and actually goes through what the points are that he wants to step back to and how he wants them to be. And it's actually a decent deal. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted you to realise that the Vice President of the European Parliament didn't know what the hell she was talking about and didn't take the time to actually even read the goddamn letter before appearing on an interview to talk about the goddamn letter and proposal but went on the reactions of Brussels and then stated that she didn't go on the reactions of Brussels because she listened to a speech. Interesting, isn't it?